I read something this week that I found pretty astounding. A man called Jeff Lytle, 42 years old, he accidentally texted his ex-boss and uh, he asked him in this text for help in killing his wife Rhoda and his four-year-old daughter. He sent this text to his ex-boss by mistake because he had intended to send it to a man called Shane who he'd employed to be the hitman who was gonna kill his wife and kill his daughter. The reason he had set up this whole plan was because his wife was insured for 20 million rand and he wanted to be blessed with that money. The text said this, hey Shane, how's it going? You remember you said that you would help me kill my wife? I'm gonna take you up on that offer. I mean, it's like a deal. And uh, his ex-boss took the messages to the police and he was later arrested and he'd, he'd planned to stage his wife's death as an accident, kind of robbery gone wrong. On her way home from work, this guy was gonna kill her. All because he wanted his life to be filled with what we would call blessing. I'm tired of living poor with a nagging wife and a dependent daughter. I wanna be blessed. So he tried to bless himself. I'll tell you what, you'll lose it all when you don't understand how blessing comes in your life, when you wanna manipulate and organize it and connive it, we've gotta understand where blessing comes from, how to live the blessed life. There are no shortcuts to the blessed life. I wanna to speak to you this morning on keys to releasing the blessing of God. Because everybody wants to be blessed, don't they? But let's look at the definition of blessing this morning. It's to seek the welfare, happiness, and well-being of someone. God is interested in your welfare, your happiness, and your well-being, isn't he? And then it says here, to bestow favor, usually associated with the material. How is blessing released from God? Number one, it comes to those who step up, not sit back. It comes to those who step up, not sit back. You see, the thing about blessing that you have to understand is that it's available. It's not like God's got it in his hand and he's saying, if you beg me enough and if you're good enough, okay, yes, son. Oh, you've been really good, eh? Whoa, yeah. Man, you've been amazing. How righteous are you? No, no, no. It's there. It's available. Let me, let me show you something. Notice here this, this verse. Read with me. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 45. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Do you know that rain is a symbol of blessing? In the Old Testament, when there was no rain, there was no blessing. So God rains on good and bad people every single day, every season, every time there's rain, it's on the good and the bad. You don't see the, the good people, they're, they're getting rained on. Their garden, my garden's been rained on. My neighbors say, ah, oh, you're unrighteous, yeah. And go dry. No, everybody gets it because it's poured out. So why do some receive and why do some not? See, it's like this. I'm not gonna have tea on stage, this is here for a purpose. See, this, this is rain. It is, we collected it, it went to Rand Water, it was purified and came out the tap. <laughs> so now I've got two cups here. Watch, as I pour this water out, as I pour it out, guess what? It's, it, it's, it's, it, it's raining all over Gauteng, it's raining all over Rivers Church. There it rains, there it rains, there it rains, there. And the rain stops. Now this person here, their cup is overflowing. Why has this person got nothing? Because they're not positioned. If your life's not positioned, if your life is not positioned, if you haven't stepped up, there can be blessing and blessing and blessing, but you'll never get it. Number two, we don't get what we deserve, we get what we desire. You don't get what you deserve, you get what you desire. The, the woman with the issue of blood in the Bible, she's unclean, she's not supposed to be legally, according to the law, you shouldn't be in public because you've got an issue of blood. Your cycle has never ceased. For 12 years you've been bleeding, you shouldn't be where people are because you'll contaminate them, that's what the law says. But she goes out there, right there where Jesus is, in the middle of the crowd. There's no announcement, there's no permission, he's just, He's just walking. She's like, 
You're not supposed to be a shut up. Hey! And she gets it. It's not that she deserved it. She desired it. Who touched me? She comes forward. Woman, your faith is saved. She's respected and she's rewarded. Did she deserve it? No. What got it? Desire. Number three, stay with me this morning. We don't have to pretend to be someone else. We don't have to pretend to be someone else. Isn't that what Jacob tried to do? He went into his father and his father said, who are you? I'm Esau, your son. He put on the fur, made himself hairy like Esau, tried to change his voice. You see, we think the blessing of God is released when we pretend. We come in Esau's clothing, thinking that by certain talk and certain behaviors that we can impress God. Jacob came as he was. He wrestled with the angel and he got. So why are you pretending? I wanna tell you, if you've messed up in your life, you can still expect the blessing of God. It's not given to the deserving, it's given to the desiring, so why pretend? This is very important. Seek the blessings of heaven, not just of earth. We're not just body, we spirit, soul, and body. So don't just seek earthly things, you've gotta have a spiritual appetite. You know how you get spiritual blessings? Write this down, you need an appetite. You know what an appetite is? It's a desire to eat, not just physically, a desire to eat from heaven. Some of us, we're easy when it comes to vision and blessing for the earth, but we've gotta have both. We've gotta have both, because you're not one dimensional, you're two dimensional. So believe God for blessing on earth, for favor, for increase, for finances, but also believe him for heavenly blessings, for salvation. And when you, you know you get salvation, you desire it. You don't deserve it, just like the earthly visions, you desire it. And when you desire it, you get it. Here's one last thing, and this will help you. The Hebrew word for mercy is rakamim. Notice it ends in I am, and it means it's plural. And notice what it says in Lamentations 3. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases his See, the English makes it plural there. His mercies never come to an end. So God is the God of the infinite blessing, but it's also spiritual. And if you desire it, you get it. You get the material blessing, you get the spiritual blessing. Sin is singular, but mercy is plural. 